I'm pleased to be able to present uh, to the readers of Abaddon magazine a man that uh, actually needs no presentation. Uh, so please welcome to our pages the one and only Paul Speckman. How are you feeling these days? Okay, I'm hanging in there. It's a little warm today. <laughs> it's a little warm here too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, It's like hell on earth, you know? Yeah, it's, it's colding these days. <laughs> and my air conditioning is not working all that good. Oh, so, that's, yeah. You're dying I, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm sweating like a pig here, please excuse me. <laughs> no worries. I understand. I'm in the same situation. You know, it's really hot in Czech today. Yo. It's like, uh, well, 30 something degrees. I don't know, 33 maybe. That's yeah. warm. Yeah. Very warm. Anyways, um, my first question um, from a collector's point of view, do you own a copy of every release you participated on? Uh, pretty much. I might be missing a few, uh, like maybe one CD or one vinyl, but for the most part I have the CD and vinyl of every release, and I usually try to keep a copy of like different colors as well, just to have them, you know, just for my collection. Yeah, but, how, but, but but honestly, I think I may be missing a few pieces, but doesn't matter. I have a lot of stuff. You know, a lot of boxes full of stuff. You know? Yeah, how big are those boxes? Oh, they're huge because you know you obviously uh, a lot of uh, reissues and stuff over the years too, and you know copies from different countries. And I try to keep I try to keep something from everywhere. You know? Yeah. So yeah, it's I a little ridiculous, you know. I, obviously. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. You know, when I die, they're going to go into garbage, I guess. But in the meantime, while I'm alive, I'm, I'm keeping them anyway. Yeah? Oh, but perhaps they'll go on eBay, you know, for ridiculous sums of money, you know, as maybe. Paul Speckman's uh, personal collection. Personal collection. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> we'll see. Good luck. Um, yeah, uh, okay. uh, I've got this interview through Hammerheart Records that is uh, huh? about to uh, push out a uh, re-edition of uh, the Seventh Day record uh, in like a month or two. Um, how does it feel to have uh, something you helped create like three decades ago uh, be still uh, relevant today and uh, in enough demand to force the label to re-release it? Oh, it's a cool feeling, actually. I mean, obviously, when we recorded the record back then, I didn't know, I didn't realize it would still be reissued again and again and again. Every couple of years, it's reissued in some country. It's amazing, you know? And same with the first one. But what's really cool about Hammerheart is they're, uh, they're slowly reissuing everything, you know? We're doing the uh, entire uh, CD collection and uh, in the future, some box sets. Obviously, like you said, on the seven-day reissued, we have to discuss which vinyl we're going to reissue, but eventually it'll all be reissued. But it's a cool thing that, like you're saying, that it's still relevant and people still want to buy it and people apparently are still uh, discovering it. So that's interesting. Who would yeah. have thought that after 1990? You know, here we are, 30 years later or so, you know, and people are still buying it and they're still reissuing it. I never would have thought that. It's amazing. Yeah, I guess it is. It's, um, it's basically often uh, considered a classic record when it comes to death metal. So uh, yeah. um, th does your ego run wild when you think about it or something no. like that? No. No, I. I'm, just, I'm just a mellow guy. I'm, I'm just looking for concerts and going to the post office, selling shit. Going to the post office three times a week. And really trying to get as many festivals and concerts and tours as I can every year. That's pretty much what I focus on. So there's no ego here. I'm happy to still be doing it, you know? Yeah, enjoying what you do, yeah. Yeah, it's great. And that's all I do. So that's a oh, good yeah. thing for me, you know? Yeah, no nine, no nine to five and stuff like that. No, yeah. no. I got to go to the post office. I guess that's my, my uh, three days a week thing, you know, making packages and sending them out. But... It's not that difficult, believe me. Yeah. yeah, it's not the worst job in the world. No, yeah. exactly. I mean, you're doing something that you, that you love, and, you know, that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. 
Um, tell me, uh, where, what do you, what do you feel about the, uh, what, uh, not just the seven days, but the early records of Master uh, nowadays? Uh, do you listen to them? Uh, oh. And um, is it a different feeling uh, from back then? Yeah, well, life has changed since then, of course. But, uh, you know, I, I don't listen to the records unless I have to, you know. <coughs> It's like when somebody does a reissue or maybe it'll do like a remastering. I may listen to it. But in all honesty, I don't, rem I, I don't hear much difference in the remaster either. Other people listen to it more seriously maybe than I do. But I was there when we recreated it. So it's kind of like a monotonous for me to listen to it again and again. I, the only thing I'm listening to now is when I record a new album, obviously in the studio, I got to listen to it quite a few times and make sure that everything's mixed and mastered correctly. But this is new music, you know. I'm not listening to the old stuff anymore. I'm happy people are buying it and people like it, but I don't myself listen to it unless I have to, as I said. If it's a remaster or a remix or something, then maybe I have to listen to it, but that's the only time I'm listening to my music. I'm always working on new stuff. Right now I'm working on a new master album as well. So that's the point, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, the new master album, oh, that sounds... Really interesting. Uh, but, uh, tell me uh, regarding the well, well, when we're talking about the new master record, uh, how much of uh, master nowadays is actually you? Uh, I'm especially creatively speaking. Uh, I write everything. Yeah. Example, like the new album, we're going to record a new album. I have 12 new songs. I've written everything. Now, obviously, I'm teaching the drummer how to play the songs and teaching the guitar player how to play the riffs. That's exactly how it works on almost every record. There's been some records over the years where, um, like the guitar player I had for 16 years, Alex, he might have wrote one or two songs out of 12, you know, but which is fine, which actually added some, some new uh, spice to the pot, so to speak, creatively. It was cool to have him write some stuff, but the last few albums... He's too busy with life, so I've just been writing them all myself again, like in the early days, you know? Uh-huh, yeah. Okay, that's, well, that's fine. Uh, considering, you know, you need to, to keep the band at, uh, at a certain level creatively, basically. Yeah, exactly. It keeps, keeps the line, you know, that's uh, basically apparent throughout the discography. And, you know, and the, and the one thing I want to say that's a bit strange sometimes is, is that I find that There's some people in a corner that, that only want to listen to the first two records or the first three records. In all honesty, the last five to ten records are the best records we ever recorded. So there's some people out there that are missing out on the on really good stuff. And it's a little bit unusual to me, you know? Well, um, yeah, um, I find that um, often myself. Uh, it's just like people, you know, consider the, these, these old albums... Oh, they're the old school, and now this is like, well, it's nothing like, uh, no, no, no. we don't, you know. <laughs> right, and and exactly, and that's my point, is that a lot of these people are missing out on some damn good records, because I'm still writing quality records, and actually, the musicians in the band nowadays are way better than back in the early days. The band is tighter, the band has better solos, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. And, and people are missing out on it, it's really strange to me. Yeah, like the, band, the band really has evolved over the years. It's way more technical, but at the same time, it's still straight, heavy, hardcore, D-beat master as well. It hasn't changed that much, just better playing, better musicianship. So I don't know why that would be a problem with anybody. Yeah, I, I actually agree with you on that. And uh, But, uh, you know, the, with these people, they, they just don't even want to listen to it, you know. It, yeah. it would be the other another thing if they would listen to it and they say, oh, yeah, this is nothing like the old records, but they just don't yeah. listen to it at all. Exactly. But then, I get, then again, I get some other fans that only like the new stuff, and that makes me smile as well. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I, I, some guy from Germany said to me, I really don't like the first three or four albums, but... Everything after that is excellent. I'm like, well, okay, you know, opinions, you know, people have different opinions, different time. They discovered it at a different time. But I'm just saying for the older fans, they really should get out and listen to some of the later records because 
for example, like uh, Vindictive Miscreant or uh, Epiphany of Hate or Slaves to Society, these are really good records. They're really yeah. missing out. I think they're missing out. It's just my opinion. You know, it doesn't matter, but I think they're missing out. Yeah, they, they are. They are great records. What's um, What's curious to me personally is that... Uh, uh, somehow over the years, well, over the years, uh, the the first few records had um, uh, somewhat of a punk, uh, well, punk vibe, but uh, the, yeah. the the punk side of stuff was uh, more out there, while on the later stuff it's, well, it's it's more uh, closed down, and uh, in, uh, in the final <laughs> in the final mix. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, but uh, that, that's why I see um, like two two basically distinct phases of master. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the the more punk or the more uh, death metal uh, type. But uh, uh-huh. um, what, what I what I want to say is, or what I want to ask you uh, is, um, where is it? Where has it uh, been lost? Was it just natural? Or did you just say, okay, I'm done with this, I want to go more in this direction now? Well, no, it was just more of a progression, you know. Obviously, uh, the first two records, let's say, for example, uh, the first lineup was uh, three writers. The drummer was writing songs on guitar, the, the guitar player was writing songs on the guitar, but, you know, middle brother and Schmidt, and obviously I was writing songs on bass and guitar. So, like, the first album... Is three uh, <clears throat> three egos and three writers on that first record, so there's a, a bit of a variety on that first record in a yeah. sense. Then uh, on the second record, now I'm the only writer, <clears throat> and Martinelli comes in. He fills in and he actually writes two songs as well, which are also great. One of the best songs on the second album, Jim Martinelli wrote the music for, and I wrote the lyrics. It's called Heathen. That's one mm-hmm. of the best songs on the record. But I'm just saying it. And then uh, then for, let's say, the third record, Collection of Souls, I went more of a punk direction. Everybody hated that. Then uh, I moved to Europe, and, and things started changing from there. I had new musicians that could play anything. Well, obviously, we made a change again. The band evolved in, in sort of a different direction as well and never went back, you know? Yeah, but uh, myself personally, I love the collection of souls. <laughs> but I love it's, collection it's, of souls, but a lot of people, including the record company, didn't like the record. It was too punky. I thought it was a cool record. I yeah, still, it is. Yeah, it is. I think cool it's got record. some interesting, strange stuff on it. I liked it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. No, tell me, I would, I would, um, well, when we're touching the subject of uh, new records and stuff, um, do you think there is a record or more of them uh, released in the past decade or more in the new century, basically, uh, that can never achieve the status <laughs> um, your early records or master as a band or some other bands from that era? Well, do you think there will ever be an album or a band that uh, achieves that kind of status? Uh, well, that's, uh, that brings up another problem, what you're saying. The problem is today is that a big percentage of the bands are just copying the bands that we, us, that we already did this stuff. The new generation of bands are playing regurgitated riffs that we wrote before. That destruction, master, death, Massacre, you know, Motorhead, whatever you want to say. A lot of these, a lot of the newer bands are just copying what was already done, you know. Yeah. So I, it's hard to say, you know. It's hard to say, it's hard to say. I mean, it's cool that they're keeping the keeping metal alive, but on the other hand, I would think that you'd want to do your own thing. Why would you want to copy somebody else? I don't know. It's only my opinion. And this opinion gets me in trouble with a lot of people. <laughs> but you know what? I don't care. I'm 58 years old. I was there when it began. I know what I heard, and I know what they're doing now. And they're, and, and, and the new generation, okay, they're keeping metal alive. I give them that. But a lot of them are just copying what we already did. And I think that's kind of lame, you know? But maybe, yeah. there, maybe there is no other direction to go. I don't know. That's a tough question, you know? Yeah, it's, a, it's a question for the new generation. They need to figure it out, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't, write your own shit. Yeah. Why do you got to copy everybody else? Uh, other, otherwise, people will just keep buying basically master records uh, <laughs> until there's no more world. I don't know. It's, but like, it's just an opinion, like I said. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to turn um, the attention basically to your lyrics, um, not sure. just uh, not just in master. Um, basically, you um, you spent your career um, successfully, more or less, avoiding the regular death metal topics uh, like uh, horror or gore, um, stuff like that. They are there, but uh, they are not as uh, obvious. Uh, and they are not as straightforward. They are entangled in a whole lot of talk about uh, negative emotions within. Uh, am I getting to the point? Some, at least, uh, somewhat. Yeah. The the point is, is that uh, like my records are basically a journal of my life, what was happening in the world around me at that particular time. So I guess you could call it like an encyclopedia. These old encyclopedias of when you were a little kid, before things were on the computer everywhere, and there were actual books, encyclopedias of history. I'm sure you saw that. I don't know if you have it anymore. I don't have it in my house anymore even. But point is, is that that's uh, how my records are. I like to keep a journal of what's going on in the world, my point of view. And it doesn't mean my point of view is always correct. I'm not saying that. I'm not like a dictator. I'm Chris Paul, you know. And I like to put food for thought out there. And I always thought it was more interesting to write about reality versus fiction. Doesn't mean that I don't have some songs that are fiction. Of course I do. Once in a while, some lyrics that come up that are beyond belief that really are fiction, you know, of course. But uh, for me, again, it's just a little bit of spice sometimes. But in all honesty, I, I like to write stuff that, songs about what's really going on, you know. And it doesn't mean I'm right or wrong. These are just my opinions. And sometimes people agree with it and sometimes people don't. But in my opinion, at least I'm putting food for thought out there. Um, for me, a lot of bands are out there, and they're successful, way more successful than me, that just uh, only sing fiction, kill, kill everybody, and, you know, you know, cartoons and, and this kind of shit. And good luck to them, you know. I'm glad they're all making a living at it. So am I in the underground, but so am I. What's interesting to me, I find that a lot of, a lot of these, a lot of bands are still... Um, they still have jobs, you know, like a nine to five job or driving a truck or working at Burger King or whatever. I'm not. I'm only working on my music. You know, that's the truth. That's not so bad. Even though I'm underground, it's not so bad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Um, it's, um, there has always been sort of, um, socially, the social aspect, uh, to your lyrics um, that started on uh, like Unknown Soldier back on the demos and uh, yeah. Pledge of Allegiance, America the Pitiful, yeah. so on and so forth. So forth. Um, uh, what's the difference uh, between the USA and Czech Republic where you now reside? Are there topics like that which could be used in respect to Czech Republic? Sure, every country has politicians that are shit. Like for example, that song uh, on if any of hates to do the politician, that's a song about every country. I wrote that here, obviously. But the point is, is uh, every country has its problems, okay? Just America's a bigger country and has more problems. That's all. <laughs> and I, I choose to pick on them because I come from there and standing on the outside looking in like, like uh, Discharge said in one of their songs standing on the outside taking a shit or whatever. It's a whole different a whole different uh, view when you're on the outside. When you're when you're there in America and you're living there, everything's fantastic. To a point. Yeah. But when you get out of there like me twenty two years ago, I can really see the problems out, you know, and, and it's terrible. That's all I can say. Okay, bands are still touring there, they're still living there, they're saying it's great, but there's a lot of problems there. There's no doubt about it. The new government and BLM and Antifa and all these crazy new organizations. And it's, I, I'm happy where I'm at. You know, it's yeah. like uh, 
<laughs> so like I can go to bed with the with the door open, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, okay. with the door unlocked. And uh, and in America, when I grew up, I could do that too. Well, when we were younger, you know, when I was a a teenager, but not anymore. You can't leave your door unlocked anymore. Somebody will come in and shoot you. No way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying everywhere, but I'm saying in in many places it's not safe anymore. You're in danger over there. It's a dangerous place. And over here, it's not so dangerous. I'm not saying I'm living in a perfect world. Nowhere is perfect. But I feel safer here where I am now. And so when when people see this interview, they're going to say, oh, that fuck's Pegman, stay there or whatever. I, I have for 22 years already. <laughs> yeah. And only someone who's visited me and seen what, what's going on in my world can understand why I'm, why I'm here, yeah? It's a wonderful place, of course. You know, life is good. I'm happy. Yeah. And that, that's the only thing that's important. Um, tell yes. me one, one more thing um, about uh, lyrics. Uh, sure. Your lyrics are um, not, uh, well, we discussed it. Uh, they're not just simple bashing of hateful verses. You know, there's quite a lot of substance in them. Yeah. And uh, tell me, is there a notebook uh, with uh, your poems that are not for death metal usage and we can expect perhaps a poem collection from you one day? I never thought of it. It's a good question. Maybe. Okay. Maybe I should think about that. Maybe. Maybe it's an idea you just put in my head. Maybe a <laughs> book of poetry. Yeah, why not? Your your lyrics do have, like I said, the substance, you know. They're not just uh, straight up verses, you know, punches in the face. Yeah, well, you know, it's like I did make. I was thinking about something earlier today, and and uh, you kind of touched on it. I, when I was in school before I before I dropped out of high school and didn't finish, I think I was uh, a junior maybe. And uh, before I dropped out, I remember I had a creative writing class. I think maybe maybe the year before, sophomore year or whatever in high school. And I remember I was really good at creative writing. And I remember the teacher reading some of my stories and tell me that you have a future in writing and you should be writing books. So maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe I'll have to put together a book of poetry before I get too old. <laughs> Might be interesting. Yeah, that, it should, it should I, I, do, I do have a lot to write about. It. It's true. I enjoy writing, you know, of course. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe one day. Yeah, you know, it's, it's 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 a much better idea than uh, than just pushing out another biography, autobiography, or something like that. Yeah, like like many are doing these days. Yeah, maybe maybe a book of poetry like Morrison did or whatever, you know. Yeah, <laughs> something you know, like that. It's a different style, but it doesn't matter. It's interesting. Still, think about it, yo. Know? Yeah, um, and when you mentioned like uh, Jim Morrison. Uh, um, you seem to basically focus on death metal um, and extreme metal, basically. Um, nuances aside, death metal is usually what uh, what you do. Um, ever think about uh, branching out to other genres? Uh, if I remember correctly, I saw somewhere uh, that you do enjoy all the rock, uh, hard rock, heavy metal. Yeah. Do you ever think uh, about doing a uh, band with uh, that kind of music? I don't know. I, 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 for sure, I don't listen to death metal. I only listen to rock, to like, uh, you know, Saxon and and uh, Accept and Deep Purple and Thin Lizzy and this kind of stuff, Rainbow, Black Sabbath. I like this kind of music quite a bit. I like The Doors and Hendrix and Joplin and all that kind of weird stuff, too. As well as punk rock, you know, like Discharge, MDC, Minor Threat. I like a big variety of music. Now, would I ever branch off and do a, a rock and roll record? I don't know. You know, it's interesting to me, and, and I like the idea. I actually recorded some songs over the years. I just never released them. Some oh. songs where I'm actually singing stuff, and it's pretty cool stuff. I just never released it. Maybe one day it comes out on a box set or something. I'll think about it, you know. People will be surprised. No yeah. Yeah. Because I really can sing, you know, not just screaming and, and howling like I do. I really can sing. There's no question about it. I just never put it out there because I never thought I would stand a chance. It's such a difficult time. 
<clears throat> but but then on the other hand, it's interesting too. You know, some of these guys are breaking out in the country and all kinds. Of, you're not you're not going to see me yeah. doing it, but it's interesting that some of these guys have success doing that too. And wild, yeah. wild to me. Yeah, but then then again, you know, it's just uh, putting your name on stuff. It's it's not all that interesting musical as uh, it is. Just seeing like uh, people like David Vincent uh, in a cowboy hat. <laughs> so whatever, if it makes them happy, what what am I to say? You know. Yeah. I mean, you're not. That's, that's not where I'm headed. But whatever. If that's what you want to do. Okay. Well, like me and that man, or whatever. That's something different too. Yeah. But I can't knock those guys. Whatever. If they're having success and they're and they like what they're doing. More power to them. You know, I'm not going to criticize them. I don't care. You know, we're not in this world to criticize everybody. I, I try to try to keep an open mind, you know. Doesn't mean I like it right away when I listen to it. Maybe I don't, but I usually don't say anything about it, you know. <laughs> I try to keep an open mind because I always believe that if you believe in what you're doing, it must be good, at least for you. Yeah. yeah. And I try to keep that, you know, open mind in that sense. Because there's a lot of, lot of music out there that I don't understand why it's so successful when I'm struggling every year, year after year, to be heard. But on the other hand, I, I can't, you can't make people listen to you. You just got to hope that somebody likes it. Yeah. yeah. But if you like it, which I do, that's the most important thing, I suppose, you know? Yeah. There's at least one fan of what you do. Yeah. Yeah, me. Yeah, you know, a, lot, a lot of times people ask me questions about stuff like this, and I'm like, you know, when I write a record, I write what I want to hear. I think this sounds cool. I want to record it, and that's where I'm at now. I'm working on my new songs right now. I started working on a new song yesterday morning, and it's great. And the point is, is I know it's great, and if it's great for me, great. It doesn't mean everybody's going to like it. It doesn't mean enough people are going to hear it. But on the other hand, I wanted to say is that now that we have Hammerheart, this, this, I have to say this is the biggest label I've had since Nuclear Blast. And Nuclear Blast, the record contract ended in 1993. Well, that's a long time ago, 1993. Yeah, and Nuclear so, Blast wasn't was what it is today in 1993. But I'm just making the point that we, we fell out with the label in 93. They didn't like Collection of Souls, and we went our separate race after that, and I struggled ever since. But the point is, is that at least now at Hammerheart, we have a chance to get this new record out. <coughs> Excuse me, and get some some support, some pushing out there. As where I haven't had, I have nothing but underground labels. No, uh, I'm not criticizing the underground labels, but they never had enough push and pull to get that record out there in the stores everywhere. It's only like the, for example, Vindictive Miscreant. It's only available like in and mail orders and stuff. It's not in stores everywhere. Really hard to find it. But at least the chances are, and it's a good chance that Hammerheart will get these uh, CDs and records and all this kind of stuff into the stores, not only mail orders. So we have a better chance that more people will see it and maybe buy it. Maybe they don't, but at least we have a chance. The nice thing about nuclear blast is like, they used to, for example, they used to have a, record stores even in airports in Holland and stuff. And I just remember years ago when we were on Nuclear Blast, 20 years ago, whatever, you know, you, you go into the into the airport or, or the bus station and and they had the CDs there and they had the vinyl there, Master Spectrum Project. And, you know, of course we sold more copies because it was more ready available. Yeah. Yep. So that's my point is that knock on wood, but we have a better chance a bigger label to get that thing out there maybe this time around somebody will buy it i can only hope yeah, <laughs> yeah hammerheart is a great label and um yeah i've, I've been a, a fan of the label since basically i was a kid um I, I have a special connection with them because they were basically the first uh the first uh, major um foreign uh label that uh, imported uh, their stuff in Serbia okay. back at, at the turn of the century. So uh, yeah. I, I do have a, a massive uh, Hammerheart collection uh, at That's home. Fine. 
Good. Well, I got my fingers crossed. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Obviously, that uh, I don't know if you had a chance to listen. I also have that uh, second uh, Speckman Project album came out too. Yep. And that's also a good one. That's a different label. I know that, and and they're also doing a fine job as well. Yep. But you know, waiting to see. You know, but these are like the first two chances I've had in many years to where somebody is actually pushing the stuff. That's great. Yep. I'm happy. That's good to hear. So yeah. uh, the, the, the deal with Hammerheart will include the new master record, right? Yeah, uh, three. Three new master records. Oh, that's great. That's we, great. We're gonna be, I'm going to be on the label for quite a few years. You know? Hopefully things work out, but I think they will. So far, everything looks fine. You know? Yep. There's no, no reason why not. Um, tell me, uh, uh, getting away from uh, master for a while... Uh, what is uh, what is it about uh, death metal or extreme metal that uh, keeps you tied to it all these years? Um, what is it about uh, metal music at, uh, in general that uh, you still appreciate? I just appreciate going out there and playing. That's the biggest thing that keeps me going in this in this music. I mean, there's nothing nothing better than going out playing concerts around the world, which we do every year, except for those two years of hell. But ah. But now, at least things are coming back again. We did 17 shows, and I think there's 27 more. So it's a few this year. There'll be more next year, but that's what keeps me going. And then, of course, seeing bands out there that are out there still kicking ass, even though they're old as hell. You know, seeing Rob Helford out there with Judas Priest kicking some ass. I saw them a few years ago. They were great. You know, seeing a lot of these old bands out there still showing that you can do it. That keeps me motivated as well. Okay, I'll admit some of them aren't singing, you know, as great as they used to, but the bands are usually still tight, the music still sounds good, and they're doing their best. And they're showing me and showing everybody out there that metal is really a way of life. And even at 70 years old, there's guys still out there, at least they're trying, okay? I admit some of them should retire, not all of them, but some of them should. But on the other hand, I kind of understand because they're still out there. There's still thousands and thousands of people in the audience that are getting into it, and it's just a great feeling. Like we yeah. played that Obscene Extreme last Friday night. What a great feeling, you know? I think there may have been 5,000 people there, and we were one of the last bands to go on. Like, we weren't even scheduled to play, and a few days earlier, so many bands canceled. Sherby contacted me asked me if we would play. We had like a crazy time slot, 1240 to 1, uh, 105 in the morning or something. And the the outside theater was still packed. We put on a great show. I had a blast. The crowd went crazy. And that's, that's why I still do it, for moments like that. Okay, sometimes we have shitty shows and clubs where, you know, there's 50 people or whatever. But on the other hand, I still give a good performance and I still have a good time connecting with those 50 people right there that I know appreciate it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. You, know, so you get a shitty small show, but they appreciate it and you feel it. Then you get a huge show with thousands and thousands. You feel that energy as well. That's why I still do it. I still enjoy that feeling, you know? Yeah. Uh, tell me one song that defines heavy metal. A song that defines heavy metal? Just one song you would play to a person who wants to know what is heavy metal and has like six minutes to hear it. Oh, that would be, that'd be from Rainbow Rising. Like maybe a, a Stargazer or Light in the Black. Oh, okay. Interesting choice. That would be that would be something for me to show you what heavy metal is, you know, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that that that's a, that's an interesting choice for me. It it was always going to be painkiller, but okay. Well, that's okay. That's great too. But it's a different <laughs> time, you know. I'm always, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. You know, I I saw I saw a lot of those early Judas Priest tours. You know, for sure. Yeah, painkiller and. Uh, uh, strong, uh, no, hold on, painkiller. Oh, that, the one with, you know, the big hits record, you know, Breaking the Law and <laughs> British Steel. Steel. Yeah. 
I saw the original British Steel Tour. That was great. Yeah. I saw Iron Maiden, like, for example, uh, the Number of the Beast Tour twice. I saw Killers once. Those, you know, the, the original shows, those were great. You know, I, I saw Black Sabbath, like, for sure, live with uh, on the Heaven and Hell album. That was fantastic, man. It was great. I saw the Mob Rules Tour as well. You know, I'm just saying, these, these were, you know, I was a young guy at that time, you know, my early early teens or whatever. It was great stuff. And then for me, that's that's the stuff that shaped my me, yo. Know? I saw Ozzy and Motorhead play together. Ozzy on the Blizzard of Oz tour. Motorhead was the support band in 1981. That was some killer shit, yo. Know? Yeah, yeah. yeah right? Good stuff. Anyway. Yeah. So, so, sounds good. <laughs> Even yeah, when you just so, say it, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> so we've already heard that you have a new master record. So what's, um, besides that, what's next in line for, for you, for the band? All right, well... Uh, Like I said, I'm, I'm teaching the guys the songs and work on the new album, like I said. We'll start recording in probably uh, between October and December. I'm not sure yet because it's like uh, it's a, a new drummer and uh, the guitar player came back after three years. He was in the band for 16 years. So we're just kind of putting it together. And I want It's got to be perfect, you know. I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, and it was like something that I actually told my wife the other day. We were talking about recording in September, and I told the guys the other day at practice, you know, maybe we record in December, maybe we'll wait a little longer. I said, I'm not in a hurry. I really want these songs to be perfect. You know, I don't yeah. want to spend all this time in the studio working so hard to fix everything. I want to get in there and blow it out right away. Because, like for example, the Vindictive Miscreant album. The drummer and I, we blew out the whole album in six hours. The drums and bass were finished completely for uh, about 10 songs in six hours, you know, and about 50, 50 minutes of material. And that's how I want to do it this time, too. I want to blow it out. I don't want to be like back in the way years ago, years and years ago, we spent, you know, days and days and days trying to get it right. I want to be ready, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, like, like the last uh, 10 albums, we were ready always. So I told the guys, you know, okay, we're talking about September. Probably not, probably December. I don't care, you know. Okay, yeah. then on the other hand, I recorded a new album with uh, Johansson Speckman. We recorded number six already two years ago. And we're looking for a label to put it out. And out of the uh, out of the Johansson uh, six recordings or whatever, this one is by far the greatest. It is an excellent record. And nobody's interested in putting it out yet. I'm still searching. You know? Which is really crazy, because it really is the best record he and I recorded together, in my opinion. Okay, the Speckman Project is also good. But this this number six is something special, believe me. I don't know if it's ever going to see the light of day. Maybe. But anyway. Well, it has to. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's a great album, and It's a bit a bit of shame that it's not out already because like one of the songs is about uh, COVID and that was you know I wrote it two years ago it's it's like gone now so you know, kind of gone now and it's like the album's well, gonna come out and it's kind of I guess again it'll be a historical piece maybe <laughs> <laughs> yeah <You know? laughs> yeah yeah that's okay anyway uh, that would be all from me for this okay. interview thank you well, very nice much to, for we uh, had some good questions I'm happy. Thank you, you know, very much for, for like sometimes you uh sometimes I get these interviews and it's just all over the road and you don't connect with the person at all and you're confused kind of and your answers are in left field and you know. And then other times like now you you get online, you see somebody and you can tell they're in the meadow and they're relaxed and you're relaxed and you can talk about anything. And that's a cool thing. So I thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Well I I did prepare myself. I spent many hours reading up on you <laughs> sorry i was a stalker these days oh that's fine <laughs> i appreciate the interview i thank you for that yeah. thanks for your time thank you too and um i wish you all the best with the new master with uh johansson speckman with the uh, speckman project and with the uh, coming shows all righty have a nice evening bye bye thank you sir ciao ciao <laughs>